Today I'm going to talk about how you can feed your plants all through the growing season and grow tons of food for about a dollar by bringing in earthworms or even microbes if you don't have earthworms. So what I want to talk about is making a worm farm. Now you can buy a worm farm that is not much different than this, a little boxier, and you know that's fifty dollars. You can make your own worm farm for your containers that costs you a dollar. Dollar twenty-five if you get it at Dollar Tree. If you can find any at the ninety-nine cent store, they're a dollar. There's a lot of other stores that sell them for about a dollar to two dollars, and they work just as good. And let me tell you something. I think they work better. I have been using pitchers, and they have given me the greatest success. All you have to do is put this pitcher in your container, and you can do this in a tote, a raised bed a bucket, anything that you've got. And what you're gonna do is feed your plants. Because when you buy soil, here's the thing you have to remember. Soil is already broke down. So if you put it out on the ground, let's say you dump it, the earthworms aren't gonna to come to it. They finished it, it's done, there's no food for them. But if you put it in a container and throw in some leaves that you picked up around the garden or kitchen scraps, you will bring in the earthworms and the microbes. There's no microbes in your potting soil either that you bought, it's all finished. What I like to do, instead of buying plant food, and if you wanna buy plant food, I will never stop you from buying plant food. You buy and do anything it takes for you to garden because we all have to garden. What I do is I feed my plants as they're growing. I know they say, no, you can't do it. Okay, they can tell you, you they can't do it, but I'm telling you, Mother Nature doesn't wait. When Mother Nature has the plants all around and the tree or the plants around are decaying, the plants are using that immediately. Anything that is underneath breaks down. Anything on the top does not. So as leaves are falling, you've got one leaf, it's not gonna break down. Maybe a little bit underneath the leaf. But if you've got 10 leaves, all the leaves underneath are gonna break down. What I'm doing with a pitcher please watch all the videos because this is the easiest thing to make is I make holes all over in the pitcher and the bottom. I don't want this to hold water. If your lid has any divots, I want you to make holes on that too. Maybe you can do one or two, just one here, one there. So this way, if it's outside and it's raining, you won't have any accumulated water on the top for fear of mosquitoes. But you know, if, if you don't want to, you don't have to. I wanted to give a little more oxygen to this so I like putting two or three holes on the top. But if you don't, you walk by, you can always just lift it up and tip it. That's an option. Here is the thing. When you bury this, and that's what you're going to do, you're gonna bury it in your raised bed, however you're growing, whatever raised bed you've got, as deep as you want. You can go all the way, or you can leave a, a portion out. But you want this full of holes, the entire thing with some sort of holes so when you put water in here, and you will, it will drain into your raised bed or container. And you're gonna put kitchen scraps in here. You're gonna put leaves in here. You're gonna to continue to put things in here. Now, what's gonna happen is the earthworms or microbes, if you don't have earthworms, microbes are gonna come in there right away. Mother Nature sends them in, and they're gonna start breaking them down. You're gonna water this. So periodically, when you go through to water your plants, I just got watered by a hummingbird, yes it flew by I saw it anyways and it wasn't water anyways what you're gonna do is you're gonna continue to put things in and then you're gonna water it as this is underground now the water will seep out and go into your container that is plant food it's slowly breaking down it's gonna be a constant source of food just like nature, that when it rains or the morning dew, everything gets on the ground and seeps in. It's feeding all the plants around. You're going to feed your plants off plants like tomato plants and cucumbers and squash. All those watermelon are heavy feeders. So when you first bring home your potting soil, if you're using that and you dump it in, it's going to be fine for the first month or two until all the plant food that they put in there is gone. Then what's gonna happen is your plants will start to fizzle out. They won't get real big, you won't have the vigorous growth, and you're gonna go, what happened? I bought it. It said it had enough plant food for five months. For what kind of plant? That's the problem because certain plants eat a lot. They pull in all the nutrients they can get. But if you have a pitcher in there, a dollar pitcher, and you keep throwing leaves in there, 
it's going to constantly flow through and feed your plant throughout the entire growing season. Now, yes, periodically, the only issue, and it's not an issue at all, you'll look inside and start to move it around and you'll notice it's all soil, compost, it's gone. Because you'll be building on the top and eventually it will build up higher and higher. Fabulous, I say. You pull it out and you save that. You put it in another container because now you've made yourself free soil, free compost. You pull, gently pull it out of the tote, dump it somewhere else. Do not throw that away. That is gold for you. Then you put it back in and you start the process again. Every day, every day, every minute, your plants are being fed and they're pulling up what they want. So you can't overfeed them this way because this is natural. What is in here is stuff you're putting in here and it could be anything, just like your composting. I put yellow leaves, some green leaves that don't look good. Don't worry if there's some aphids or something on there, it's all gonna break down. Tomato scraps, any scraps from the kitchen, eggshells, you put all that in there, coffee grinds. You can put a little bit of paper, but I don't wanna waste my time putting a lot of paper in something this small. I do that on the bottom when I'm building it. But you keep putting it in there until you have no more room. But you keep watering it because the microbes and the earthworms are alive. You want that. And with that, they need water. All living creatures pretty much need water, some sort of water. They don't wanna be underwater. Microbes don't come from ponds. They're not these microbes. They're not swimming around, but they wanna be wet. They wanna be damp. And that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna keep them damp. So you're gonna lift this up periodically. And if you don't wanna lift it, this turns and opens up where you can just put your hose in there or your watering can and water it. You can turn it and then you water it and then it seeps out and it feeds your plants. And not only waters the plants, and if you got lettuce growing, you'll notice some of the lettuce will hug up against this because it wants to get all the nutrients coming out. This is fabulous. The other thing is no rodents, no nothing. They can't lift this. They have no idea. They're not that smart. So they're not even interested in it. And so when you close this up, it drops in. Now the reason I like pitchers is see how it slides? There's no fighting. You can get some that twist. You know, this one locks, it just so happens this one locks, but some of them twist and screw on. Here's the problem. Like everything, plastic can slightly warp. Just the smallest amount, you know how things are, and then you won't be able to twist it. You won't be able to get it off. I don't wanna fight with it. We're Robbie and Gary gardening easy. We want it easy, but we want it right. You want something that's just gonna lift up. I locked it. Lift up so you could just walk by, not even pay attention, just the regular thing you do, drop in some stuff. Again, you could do it once a week. You don't have to do it all the time. And then you just drop it on. Look how it slides on. Is that fabulous? You've now created a worm farm, a wonderful ecosystem for your plants and throughout the entire growing season. Be it in, if you're in Southern California and you're growing almost all year, except for this year we had snow, so a lot of our stuff didn't make it through the snow. But if you're back east and you only have four months of growing season, you got four months of free plant food, free. You don't have something, ask your neighbors to keep some kitchen scraps or something. Go take a walk in a beautiful park and pick up some leaves on the ground and bring it back. Anything you've got, put it in there. And I'm telling you, you can garden, not only on the free or close to it, but better. So that's up to you. You garden whatever way is gonna work for you. That's my motto. I don't care how you do it, just do it. And I bet you, you'll feel better for it because I can feel when I cut back myself and I forget sometimes that I'm so busy. Hey, I've put stuff down to go eat and Gary will come in and say, you didn't eat. Oh, I was so busy, I forgot, I thought I did. So that's why I always say, don't forget to eat what you grow. Hope I gave you some tips and tricks on how to grow for next to nothing better than if you had to go buy everything. But again, if that's what you want to do, go buy it. Bye-bye and have a wonderful day. And please like and subscribe and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. I love these. It doesn't matter what kind. It doesn't matter if they're a dollar or four dollars. As long as they just slip on, that's all I care.